Hi, welcome to the Battle Square. Uh, my name's Dan, this is Matt. Uh, we're bringing to you the Spira Open feature matches. Today's match is Jamie Faulkner versus Kevin Whaley. It's round five, uh, table one. Um, I'd just like to have a little mention of the Card Cavern. They're doing a little pre-order uh, pre uh, raffle where you could win a cloud 9.5 BGA graded um, Sephiroth PR001 signed by Kagiyama-san <clears throat> and a 30th anniversary Gabranth promo signed by Kagiyama-san now in order to win them you've got to pre-order at least one box or, um, it's per entry per um, pre-order you get one entry into the raffle that's um, not only just boxes. Yeah, it's uh, play it's sets as well. Play sets. Um, yeah, so get over to cardcabin.co.uk. Um, multiple orders will get you multiple entries into the raffle as well. Yeah. So, so uh, it's per or per pre-order of each set or uh, box, you get an entry into the raffle. Um, and we've, I think, well, we've only got just over a week left until um, release date. So. You want to time to get, get in, there. in yeah get get in there um also I'd like to give a little mention to ff decks uh, uh, we're, we're uploading our content to them now so um uh, get over there have a look at all the content over there and uh yeah let's start with the game <clears throat> right. so presto is uh, jamie faulkner rolled a four get hanked is kevin whaley who has rolled a six, so I'd imagine he'd be going first. Yeah, Kevin's going first. I don't know what elements they're running. No, uh, Jamie's a bit I more. I think of a... Jamie's running wind water. I yeah, think. I was going to say he's a wind water sort of player, I isn't he? I have a feeling that Kevin is running uh, mono lightning, but right, okay. I'm not sure. I think here they're just quickly trying to confirm that I've managed to get on um, to record their uh, match. So it might be a little bit of a slow start. I think that night I was pretty tired. <clears throat> right, Kevin has decided to keep his hand and Jamie's decided to mulligan. Just wishing each other good luck, like good sportsmen that they are. Yep. <laughs> right. Let's get rolling. Right, Gilgamesh into the break zone. Yeah, yeah four cost that can't be returned to its hand. Plays for a Nashu. Nashu, one of those cards that we keep on seeing in, well, obviously lightning decks, but really nice card. The card name Hildebrand, you control gangs haste, and at the cost of dulling, choose one card name Hildebrand you control. It gains two thousand power until the end of turn. Now Hildebrand at standard, I think, is a seven seven k, yeah. so he can effectively be a nine k which can be quite offensive. And obviously in mono um, mono lightning, you're going to have Lulu, so potentially a 10k uh, 3 Pace cost. forward, yeah. yeah, which is strong. Because you can play him out with um, Al Sid as well. Yeah, that's right. I think we've seen Hildebrand quite a lot in the, in the open so far. I mean, he seems to be quite a common run in lightning at the moment, mm. which yeah, is totally understandable. Uh, looking to see maybe I think that whether he wants to play anything else this turn. No, I think it's Jamie's turn now. Yeah, he's drawn. Oh two, yeah, so he's passed. He's obviously just deciding what to play. Taking his 
time. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I think it's going to be kind of a crucial match. I think uh, it's round five. Well, to be honest, I think they're both. They were at both four, four and zero. Yeah, they were both at this zone. point. So uh, there's a devout into the break zone for Bard. Uh, Bard is one ice and dull. Put Bard into the break zone. Choose one forward. Dull it. I quite like that card. I really like that card it, as well. It works really well. I mean, I run a mono ice build and I did opt to run the black mage and I am thinking about changing over for the bard that's um, interesting synergizes really well with the uh, it's interesting he's discarded the terror to play summoner uh, that's quite a, a yeah, when, pay for when he could have waited till next turn yeah. to play it for free I suppose and I would have preferred to keep terror in my hand well it depends on what he's got in his hand obviously and what his um, aim is but we pass back now anyway yeah. to Kev. Black Mage into the break zone. That's a two cost backup discarded. The Hildebrand. To to the Hildebrand. Yeah. So obviously he hit a nice draw to start. Yeah. Knew he wanted that Nashu so that he could uh, be offensive first turn. Well, second turn, sorry. And for the haste. Early point of damage. Which I think is quite crucial uh, yeah. when you're facing against uh, something like ice. You want to get as many points of damage in yeah, early. Yeah, you, you definitely want the early offence. And to see the lock go into the damage zone yeah, that's, is that's uh, nice. It's probably quite nice for Kev. So I'm seeing a lot at the moment with lock being played quite aggressively in early turns. Yeah. Um, Obviously, because he prompts that discard when he puts through damage, so to get him out early and start being offensive with him can really put your opponent at an early disadvantage. Um, so I'm sure Chambers not zone. too happy. Mog, that's a 13 search, wasn't it? Yeah, so there so we go. He's going for two searches. I can never remember his name. Banana Sid. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so he searched into the Sarah, searched into the Setsa. Which, to be honest, is that's what that's obviously he obviously had those in hand, and that's why he wanted the summoner backup so he could afford to cost it all. Yeah. Uh, so he's still on curve, which yeah, so he's now got four backups. Played it very methodically, yeah. giving himself a really good early start. So I'm sure he's happy to take those couple points of damage at this point. Yeah. Just to set up field. Because four backups on field, he can effectively play more or less anything in his hand now. And now we see uh, Lulu on Kevin's uh, side, which turns Hildebrand into a 10k with Na With Nashu's yeah. tap effect, which is exactly what you said just now. Yeah. Uh, Rigged into the break zone. For Red Mage. Yeah, so, you know, that could be two haste forwards next turn so it's going to put pressure on Jamie to make sure that he can produce a forward next turn goes in for that second point of damage which is a Shiva which kill would well at, possibly this, kill. at this point I don't think it's going to take the Hildebrand because there's uh, no, 7k oh no it's, it, eight, he's, it's, he's 8k it's, isn't it's he? 6 to a dull forward uh, unless there's another Shiva in the break zone yeah, so per Shiva in the break zone, you, um, it's an extra thousand uh, damage. So unfortunately, Jamie's seeing no value on that Shiva. No. Lucky he played that Lulu out when he did. Yep. A lot of people would go straight to attack phase. Okay, so we see him play a flan here, which is an interesting choice. And another And flan. a second flan. So with Kevin with two cards in hand, this could really help to put to put Kevin at a disadvantage. Now remind me, what does Flan do? Flan forces your opponent to discard one card, um, and can also uh, search another Flan. Right. Okay. As far as I'm aware, yeah. from what I remember. And then there's Sarah, Brick coming out, which, which makes you discard. Forces the discard for the second card. 
So now Kevin's running on uh, three backups, which you know pumps him to be able to play a uh, a uh, well. He he could play into a two cost and still give it haste. Although I can't imagine it's going to deal with that Sarah, but then Hildebrand's there to do that job. Now will Jamie be? Oh no, sorry. Will Kevin be offensive this turn and put in for the attack? I don't see why not. He's uh, overpowering Sarah. And yeah. Sarah's done her job, so I would probably block here. No, he's taking the point. No, no, so yeah, he took the point. And it was a good point to take because all he saw there was the other banana Sid. It's going to get Jamie no value to play that card. There's a deer in the break zone. And Dunning to play our Sid on his own. Okay, so Oof. yeah, obviously he couldn't afford the idea. Although the idea would have been optimal at that point because it would have been enough to break that Sarah because he does control three lightning backups. Mm. So just a shame he didn't have that extra card. Do, do um, you think he's played a bit too offensively there? Uh, he could have waited one more turn and taken I think he a could point have. of damage. I think he could have afforded just to take one point of but damage. But then again, he's thinking, discard. And so I might as well dump my hand. The Sarah, is she 6 or 5k? She's 6, I think. Okay, so it's a straight trade, and I suppose to lose an Alcid... Isn't that big a deal, is it? No, no, it's not. But it's better when you've got and also, more value off of him. And also, with the Flan on field, it's going to stop um, Jamie from forcing him to discard another card, so... Yeah. There's Duke Lard to make, make her a six, uh, 7k. Which, I don't know, because Al said 7, uh, 7k because of Lulu as well. Yeah, so, so they, that would they be will trade. break even. So he's past turn. Now, I'll be curious to see if we see something come with haste this turn. Because he can afford to play out a 3 cost and give haste. Um, think if that he's I, holding if I was Kevin at this position I would probably be trying to um, replenish my hand rather than go for um, there we go so we see the trade for the Sarah he's tapping three a cyclops. possibly a cyclops yeah, yeah. ok so I mean that must feel bad for Jamie but you know, if, well, he's still if, got if, the if, block. He, if yeah. he does have another Sarah or can play into another Sarah, it's going to get him some value again. But Hildebrand now is going to get through a point of damage. And his Flan probably going for the discard. She was being, is she was being played? Okay, so I don't, I'm not really too sure if that is optimal. Um, for removing that house here, I suppose it keeps Sarah on field because at damage resolution, um, house yeah, already gone. Sarah stays. Yeah. So, um, I mean, he can block again, but it's not going to get rid of Hildebrand. But it won't get rid of Hildebrand. Not unless he's got another Shiva in hand. It looks like he took damage, the lock. Ah, uh, yeah. Went That's in. the second lock in the damage zone. Not what you want to see. No, because you, you lose that sort of late game, unblockable, you know. Sometimes he can be a good win condition. But now, we're putting through a damage with Sarah. First point of damage. And that's, uh, what uh, is that? Judge Sal. And there flan we go, to breaking the discard. flan to discard the uh, onion knight. I'm sure, I'm sure Kevin was really hoping to draw into an Alcid next turn. That's a good play. Genesis go. to Dullum Freeze and Hildebrand. Hildebrand. Which is ideal because 
in that deck that Kevin's running. If it is Mono Lightning, which it appears to be, we're not going to see any activation cards. <coughs> which means Genesis, if Kevin doesn't produce a forward, is going to force a discard again. Okay, yeah, tap one to play into an evoker. Is it an evoker or summoner? I think that's a summoner, isn't it? Uh, regardless, it's a one a one drop backup, um, which is a nice setup if Kevin's intending to play another. Well, sorry, not another, but to play an Adia onto the field at some point because it can break either one of those cards on entry. It's just um, handy having that extra backup. Yeah, for costing as well. Well, that's it. Four backups, and you can more or less comfortably play anything onto the he's field. Gonna, he's going to get a card discarded now for, uh, from hand, so if he's more than likely tried to hold on to something. Um, um, no. Oh, yeah, of course. Now it's past turn. Yeah, Genesis is active. He gets to attack. So this, a discard. Yeah, Genesis. When um when he enters, he deals uh, he dulls and freezes a forward, and when he attacks, he gets to uh, make your opponent discard one card. If he deals damage to your opponent, he he, he forces yeah, he a, forces a, a discard, discard, which is such a good ability. Now, Jamie here is he's in a really good position. He's got five backups, two forwards, and five cards in hand. So. Anything that Kevin draws into or produces, I'm sure Jamie's going to have some kind of relevant response. That's not a bad... Uh, well, that's not... Yep, so that's another point of damage. Um, was that Gramis just gone in? Oh, and that's no, another there Gilgamesh. we go. It's a Gilgamesh. So I think we've seen now Kevin discard one well, Gilgamesh. Probably a Setzer coming here. Yeah, Setzer. Yeah. Yeah. Probably going to search for that last lock, I'd imagine. And Setsu, no, Celeste. Setsu is just very relevant as well because... Celeste to play the next... Uh, to th the freeze Hildebrand again. That's right. And also That's such a good little Setsu break. is very relevant in this case because yeah. if he does block and break, he's going to dull and freeze a forward yeah. as well. Yeah. You get so much value off of Setsu. I think that's why um, the ice engine... Uh, six engine works so much better than the water nine engine um, yeah because you yeah. get m so much more value off of these cards i um, mean i'd say the costing of the nine engine you know you get better value on playing the cards but the effects that the ice ca characters yeah, it's carry from six it's just more, the same. far more effective it's essentially the same because it's a five cost forward that searches that can search for a three cost backup, which searches for a forward as well. Yeah, which yeah. is exactly the same. The only obviously there's obviously a different is, is, the, is the Zidane. Yeah, because he he can come in effectively free. His cost is reduced by one and allows you to draw a card. Yeah, yeah. So, but I, again, like I say, I reckon you get much better value off of. Um, yeah, yeah. Like I mean, this. to be able to play a setter and search into a card like lock. For yeah. example, if or you're and you're Celeste. holding another one, yeah, then you're getting a free point of damage from his unblockable effect. Okay, so Amon comes in. Um, I think we're waiting for a dull target, and he's left Red Mage up with Nashu, which means he can um, give Amon haste, which will mean he'll be able to dull a forward this yeah. turn. Um, or in his opponent's Ooh. turn. So he's forcing the dull, which means he's probably going to respond. Yeah, respond with Red Mage to give haste, so he dulls. Um, I would imagine Setsa. Mm, or well, Celeste. Yeah, yeah Celeste, because it deals the damage when... It would deal 4k um, when it attacks to a dull forward. Um Whereas I don't know, I think maybe I would have frozen the Setsa. Zalera. Okay, so Zalera here, it's only going to remove the Hildebrand. Um, mm -hmm. Because it doesn't remove four, uh, costs. four costs. For some reason he took it back to his hand. Now, is that right? Um... 
because when Hildebrand is dealt damage that's yeah, less than he, his he power. Put it in his, um, oh, there we go. Form. Yeah. So he's he's gone for the attack with Sarah by the looks of it. So Celeste was the one that was dulled by Ammon, yeah. Yes. And he's gone for another attack with Setzer. This, if I'm honest, this just seems like game over at this yeah, point. Yeah, this is looking like a very quick game. I think Jamie has seen everything oh, yeah. that he needs. And there we go. Jamie has seen everything he needs to see. It's it's kind of come out in perfect order, in yeah. my opinion, for Jamie. Um, obviously, Amon can dull the Renoa, but, but there's no value in that because unless Kevin produces a forward, he's looking at, I think, critical now yeah it looks like it there's not really much he can do in this situation he's just got to hope he's got to f uh, he draws into a forward at that point but even then I don't know how many points of damage he's on he's probably what five at this point yeah I think sometimes where where the problem may have been here is I think Kevin was quite aggressive on an early start, yeah. and sometimes that can put you behind, especially in um, in comparison with a deck like Mono Ice, which effectively is more of a slow setup. But once the setup's there, yeah. it becomes very hard to deal with. Um, letting your opponent stack his hand with response, like we saw earlier when Jamie had five cards in hand. Yeah. Um, there's just so much you can do with five cards in hand in mono ice. I do believe that uh, Kevin just quit the game. So I think he conceded. There was obviously nothing he could do. Yeah, I'm thinking there that, that, yeah, that was a submission. He, yeah, he obviously didn't draw into any forwards. Mind you, like I said, like we said before... There's not really much he's going to be able to do, even with a second forward. You're facing five forwards and potentially another one when he uh, draws. What's Ammon going to do? Block and dull, and then, um, yeah, there's not really yeah. much he's going to be able to do at that point. Right, if he's lucky, block one, respond, dull one. Yeah, um, but, but then, then that's another three. But you're still looking at three points of damage. Yeah. And yeah, I think at that point, that was... Uh, it was fair to say, yeah. Was, um, that was critical. Yeah. So. Well, I think that... It was a very fast game. I think Kevin got quite unlucky, mm. if I'm honest. Um, Jamie just seemed to hit everything that he needed. Uh, the thing is, it's how you play it as well, yeah, isn't it? it is, he, he knows that deck inside out. He's played it for ages now. He, he's built it and he knows it. Um, he knows. He knew to discard the terror to play the one drop summoner. Yeah. And most people are going to wait that turn to yeah, play it I out. Mean, so, so you get it for for free, basically. Yeah, he played, um, he played it the right way. Yeah, it definitely. You know, he built his resources. That's what Mono Ice is about. Mm -hmm. Set your field up, build your hand, and then it just unleashes a world of doom for your opponent. <laughs> it really yeah. does. I, um, I, 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 through I, I, testing Mono Ice, I found the exact same thing. Yeah. I, I will sit there and take three, maybe four points of damage. Yeah, I, yeah. Just, to, just to build my hand up, just to build my field See, up. The one person that showed me, well, not showed me, I, I would often... Uh, whenever I played against Joshua Freeman Birch, um, he would always like be okay with taking a few points of damage, yeah. building his field, and, and he, he just me method it. methodically yeah. planning how yeah. you're going to and deal with everything on field. All comes out, and just you, you can't do anything. You can't do anything to stop it. But yeah, I mean, it's a short, sweet game. Um, I, I, I I used to be a massive fan of. Uh, I still am a massive fan of the. Um, uh, nine search and the, the the nine engine, water knights and everything like that. But the more I see this and the more I play it, um, it's just such good value and it it looks so nice. It it plays so nice. Mm. Um, so yeah, I, I can't wait for Opus Five now because I I can't imagine um, this not this disappearing. This sort of uh, six search and the no, engine 
That's right. disappearing. But yeah. Yeah, well. so yeah, I'll give a shout out for Card Cavern again. You know, and, they're uh, uh, they're pu- they're putting on some pretty good promotional offers with those orders, and like we say, it's pretty limited time now, and the prizes are just yeah, they're paramount to the value in what you order. They are just it is ridiculous. Far, yeah, it's it's uh it's a solid deal, I think, to pre-order with these guys. Um, because yeah, you stand also, the chance of getting some really good value back with your orders. Also, uh, with uh, regionals <coughs> coming up and more tournaments coming up, you're going to want to get your decks ready, aren't you? Yes. So, um, yes. You can also get over to Card Cavern, and whilst the Spear Open is on, he's got a 15% discount on all singles, um, foil, non foil. This uh, is till the end of the yeah. Spear Open. Just whilst the Spear Open is on. You get over there, put in Spira all in capitals. I mean, I think we're on round five. I yeah. I can't remember. I think there's four, uh, six or seven rounds. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, there's there's not much longer for that. So get over there and be, check it out. It's just after Opus Five. It comes out, isn't it? Okay. Um, it's going to finish probably. And uh, yeah, also check out um, FF decks. Um, maybe not all the constructions you'll see in these videos will be there, but some will. Um, also, the Battle Square, we're now on there as well. So, some of the constructions that we're doing, you'll be able to find on there if you like any of that. Even if you wanted to chop and change a few bits, I'm sure you'll find something in there that's useful. Uh, um, yeah, but thanks. that's it. So, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, please check out the Facebook group. And, well, we'll see you for the next round. Cheers.